A neutron bomb is a munition with a special low-power nuclear or thermonuclear charge. The small size of such a charge also makes it possible, in addition to aerial bombs, to place it inside various types of tactical weapons, for example, in the ammunition of a recoilless or artillery piece, in the head of a ballistic and cruise missile. All of these are classified as neutron weapons, and they themselves are a type of nuclear weapon. The development of neutron weapons was carried out both in the USA and in the USSR in the 60s and 70s of the last century. It was intended primarily to destroy enemy manpower, as well as tanks and other various armored vehicles in a limited combat zone. Most of the data on the development of neutron munitions is classified. Nevertheless, two types of neutron charges are known for certain. Let's look at each of them in order. July 7, 1962, Nevada Proving Ground, USA The Army is preparing to test the new 155mm M-29 recoilless cannon, better known as the Davik rocket. A Mark 54 nuclear munition weighing about 35 kilograms was mounted at the end of the gun barrel. The gun was fired at the position of a simulated enemy at a distance of one and a half kilometers. The explosion occurred in the air a few meters from the ground. The energy release was only 20 tons of TNT. Such a low explosion power did not even form the well-known silhouette of a nuclear mushroom, and the explosion itself caused almost no serious damage to tanks and armored vehicles. However, if there were people in it and in an open area, they would inevitably receive a lethal dose of radiation within a radius of about 300 meters from the explosion point. A line of at least 1,600 meters or more will be considered a safe distance in such a nuclear explosion. The main damaging factor of the explosion of the Davy Crockett munition, in addition to the shock wave and light radiation, was penetrating radiation, i.e. an intense stream of gamma quanta and neutrons released during a nuclear reaction. And although this munition was not a full-fledged neutron bomb, it became its predecessor. Consider the Davy Crockett charge design. In its central part, presumably, there was a small hollow ball of fissionable matter of plutonium or uranium. Inside its cavity was a deuterium booster of the third fission-enhancing mixture, and the ball itself was surrounded by a beryllium neutron reflector, which also enhanced fission. All this made it possible to increase efficiency per unit mass of fissile material and, accordingly, reduce the weight and size of the ammunition. When a charge is detonated due to the fission of matter, fast neutrons are emitted, mainly with an energy of about 1 to 2 mu. These neutrons are able to penetrate the strongest barriers. For example, a sheet of 150 mm steel armor traps up to 90% of gamma rays and only 20% of neutrons. As a result of a powerful neutron flux, ionization of living tissue in the human body occurs. So a neutron is able to detach an electron from a neutrally charged atom, turning it into a positively charged ion. A detached electron is also capable of repeating this process to detach electrons from other atoms. The result of this process is a change in the chemical structure of various compounds inside living cells, which causes their death. This is called radiation sickness. There is another danger for the crew of tanks and other armored vehicles. Some stable atoms of chemicals in the alloy of armor are capable of capturing neutrons, turning into unstable isotopes. These isotopes begin to emit radiation, which causes the tank's armor to become a source of strong ionizing radiation itself, increasing the crew's exposure. This effect is called induced radioactivity. Therefore, since the 60s, an anti-neutron shock was installed on the armor of tanks, consisting of several layers of various materials, for example, boron content, which absorbed the neutron flux well. And the armor itself was made of a special pure alloy, which produced less induced radioactivity. All this required the creation of a more powerful neutron charge. We have reviewed the design and principle of operation of a low-power nuclear charge, the main damaging factor of which is penetrating radiation, therefore it is only partially a neutron bomb. Now let's look at the construction of a real neutron bomb. For the most part, it doesn't differ much from the previous charge. It's still the same ball with a boost, 
but instead of a neutron reflector, there is now a small layer of deuterium from the third mixture. There is also another type of construction, when the deuterium of the third mixture is brought out. At its core, a neutron charge is a low-power thermonuclear charge, with the only difference being that it lacks a natural uranium tempera. At the moment of its detonation, the fissile material initiates a small thermonuclear reaction in the delta of the third mixture. This reaction emits high-energy neutrons, on the order of 14 mF. They leave the charge instantly and unhindered, outstripping the explosion itself, and their penetrating power is much higher than that of the neutrons released during fission. Approximately 10 to 24 degrees of neutrons are released for each kiloton of nuclear charge power. When a neutron charge of the same power explodes, the number of neutrons released is about 10 times greater, and their flux density is correspondingly higher. It follows from this that the explosion of a neutron charge, unlike a nuclear one, creates a denser and more intense neutron flux, and its penetrating power is much higher. A kiloton neutron charge generates the same penetrating radiation as a conventional 10 kiloton nuclear charge. It is most appropriate to use a neutron munition when detonating in the air at a short distance from the ground with a capacity of 10 tons to 10 kilotons, since increasing the charge power does not increase the radiation damage zone due to the active absorption of neutrons by the atmosphere and their natural spread in the environment. When a neutron munition explodes, the neutron damage zone is approximately 2.5 kilometers. A person will receive a lethal dose of radiation in a radius of up to 1,350 meters, and in a radius of up to 2,500 meters he will receive radiation sickness of varying severity. There is an opinion that a neutron bomb affects only living tissue, leaving things and objects unharmed. This is incorrect, since even with a 1 kiloton neutron munition explosion, the area of severe destruction will be within a radius of several hundred meters, which is almost the same as a nuclear explosion of the same power. Neutron ammunition can be used not only to defeat enemy ground forces, but also effectively used in missile defense warheads. In atmospheric and outer space, the main damaging factor of a nuclear charge explosion, a shock wave, does not form, and light radiation acts ineffectively on the head of an enemy missile protected from it. Therefore, in order to shoot it down, a nuclear explosion must occur as close to the target as possible. A neutron munition creates a neutron stream of high penetrating power, which is no longer prevented by the Earth's atmosphere from spreading over long distances. Therefore, the accuracy of hitting the target is no longer so important. In 1961, in the USSR on a similar experiment was conducted at the Osimopalatinsk test site, which showed that the rocket head fails at a neutron flux of 10 to 12 and 10 to 13 degrees per square centimeter. In addition, predetonation may occur in its fissile material, followed by a pop and complete destruction of the warhead body. We have considered several different types of non-electronic charges. We learned about the methods of their application and their damaging effects.